Hello ladies and gentlemen, Ernst Huber, the Technical Service Chief of Steyr Sportwaffen, will today show you the most important technical tips to repair Steyr air weapons. You remove the CO2 cylinder from the pistol. Open these two screws a few turns in order to draw out the barrel. Next remove these four 2.5mm Allen screws to take off the adapter. Underneath the adapter is a strong pressure spring which sits on top of the valve. There is no need to change this valve as part of the conversion to compressed air. If the valve is damaged in any way, it should however be replaced. Reinsert the valve. Make sure it is relatively free, force must not be used to insert it. Here is an overview of the CO2 parts. Four short screws, a strong spring, and the adapter for the CO2 cylinder. Here we have the conversion kit for compressed air. The special pressure spring, one softer valve spring, four long screws to mount the pressure reducing valve, the filling adapter for compressed air, and of course the compressed air cylinder. Start with the valve spring which is placed precisely upon the valve. The pressure reducing valve has a hole in the spring. Make sure the spring sits inside this hole. Press the entire valve into the pistol and hold it with one finger. Insert one of the longer screws to hold it in place. The screws need to be mounted in a diagonal pattern. The pressure reducing valve is the same for the LP1, LP10 and LP2 models, so there is no difference. Nevertheless, I want to highlight that we are only talking about the conversion of a one-shot pistol. Should you wish to convert an LP5, a five-shot air pistol, from CO2 to compressed air, this is only possible by returning it to our workshop in Austria. The correct installation of the barrel. The barrel has two eccentric countersunk holes. When inserting the barrel, the first screw pulls the barrel back into the housing. The second screw pulls it forward and secures it. In the first instance, you have to close the weapon. The cocking lever opens itself because there is no tension between the barrel and the bolt. By turning the first screw, that draws the barrel back towards the bolt. A resistance is felt when tightening the screw. At this point, check the cocking lever. If it is still opens too easily, tighten the screw further. The bolt should no longer open by itself. Equally, you should not need too much force to open the lever. The adjustment is now perfect. Finally, tighten the second screw to secure the barrel. Now you can mount the compressed air cylinder. The muzzle velocity of the weapon needs to be checked. Should the velocity be too high, you are able to change to a special compressed air pressure spring. For this you need to take off the grip.
By turning the slotted screw, also called the velocity screw, clockwise, this will re increase the velocity. Anti-clockwise, it will reduce the velocity. Should there be problems making these adjustments with the original CO2 spring, you will need to change the pressure spring. Here is a small 1.5mm Allen screw. By opening this, you can turn the slotted velocity screw easily. By removing the velocity screw, the pressure spring is accessible. This will be removed and replaced by the pressure spring for compressed air. The velocity screw should sit in the centre of the spring and is then tightened. The entire unit is held in place by a 1.5mm screw. Be careful not to loosen this screw too much as the whole unit may drop out. This piece is held by the use of a groove and a small screw. This part is slotted on one side. It is important that the slot is vertical and facing downwards when the part is mounted, otherwise it cannot be clamped in place. Neither to the right nor the left, it must be always vertical. Insert the screw into the weapon and onto the spring below. The slot is vertical. Hold it in place by slightly tightening the small screw. This allows the velocity screw to be adjusted easily. At this point using a velocity measuring device you will need to check the velocity. For a one shot compressed air pistol this should be between 155 and 160 meters per second. By turning the velocity screw clockwise, the velocity increases. Anticlockwise, it reduces. After the adjustment of the velocity, the velocity screw is held in place by this screw on the side. During competition and normal use, it is not possible for the velocity screw to become loose.